Good morning to everybody and thank you for the opportunity uh, that I can speak here about such a heavy uh, subject or a topic. Um, but I think it's maybe more technical than it's really interesting, but I think it might um, save people a lot of time and actually help students also. And that's why I think it is an important uh, topic to speak about. Um, so I'm going to start by sharing uh, PPT, see if I can manage to do that. Um, right. The side, let's see if it's working. Okay, can you see the PPT? Korea TESOL, it's supposed to say. Okay. And let me just get all the stuff out of the way. Right, I think that might work. Okay, so um, <clears throat> we um, have found uh, in the last year or so that things are very different from what we were used to. For some people, the online teaching was a lot of fun and for some it's been a real frustration. And I think we should just acknowledge that um, it's not uh, that good for everybody, but uh, we stuck with it and we need to deal with um, what we have. So um, I wrote something also in the proceedings and there's two things I want to stress from, from the introduction there. The one is um, that uh, research that was done uh, last year showed that for many people, assessments were a problem. And uh, they also uh, found that online teaching greatly changes the nature of assessment and the ways in which we can provide feedback for our students. So since that is the case, um, I think it is important for us to evaluate the way we've been doing things over the last 50 years and ask ourselves whether our assessment and the feedback we're giving is, is really helping the online students. What I found is that um, feedback is very crucial for online learning, and that means individualized feedback. Uh, because this is kind of the only way the student know, knows whether they are um, progressing or not, whether they are uh, on, on track and doing the stuff that's supposed to be done. So um, because this uh, is so important, I tried to develop ways to give more feedback, but without uh, having to spend hours and hours on that. Um, and uh, of course, we always have to keep in mind that your assessment should be valid and accurate. You should test what you are trying to test and assess what uh, the skill that you have in mind. And it should not change over time. You should keep on um, getting the same results with the thing, same kind of tests and the same levels. Um, so there's more about that in, in the proceedings, uh, the chapter about that. But um, if, uh, if I could contribute something then is that I started using dynamic rubrics to give uh, effective online feedback and scoring. Uh, it combines the feedback and the scoring. And I found that you can actually give much more feedback than, um, than usually. Now, um, especially in language, we had the uh, uh, the tendency to create rubrics that's easy for the teacher and you um, you only score one band like you know uh, out of 10 the student will get like uh, six seven uh, it's, it's kind of very subjective the, the way that we've been scoring if you have a feeling this student is a seven and that one is a seven and a half and the next one is eight and and that more or less gives an average idea of where the student is but we, with dynamic rubrics, you can score much more in detail and um, without taking too much time of it. So that's why I started using, um, you have the option to have a more holistic rubric or a more details one or what they call an, an analytic um, uh, rubric. And I decided to, to make more use of the analytic uh, rubric. So, um, 
I want you to start by downloading the example if you want to, um, and that you can even open it while I give the presentation. So let me just get that. So there is a, an example link in the chat box that you can download. Um, so you can go into that link and while you download it and you can look at it on your computer, uh, it's not a, exactly the same example that I'm using in all the different sections of this presentation, but uh, it has all the same elements. So once you've downloaded the example, I want to start by just giving an overview of the rubric. Um, and in order to do that, I'm going to open my PPT, oh, sorry, my Excel spreadsheet here. So I hope everyone can see this. Um, just uh, send me a message if you can't, or send me a chat. So here is an example. Now this is not, um, this is just an example rubric. Don't think you can use it as it is. <clears throat> you need to put in the different uh, items that you want to, to assess here on the one hand and the marks, the score that you want to um, allocate for each um, section of, of these uh, uh, items, uh, you have to just customize it for your own use. So here, um, the way this rubric works is when I have to score, I have uh, the class information, the here on top, we have the name of the course, the course code, the student's name, my name is there, and a section for teacher feedback. <clears throat> and then here, um, I can do the scoring. And it's automated in such a way that I can say, let's say I want to uh, score the student good on the title. Uh, then I have to click on this cell and I just add a full stop at the end of that word. Uh, the next one is sufficient. So I add a full stop and then it automatically does the rest of the work for me. I, I just need to add in this rubric, one, two, three, four, five, six uh, full stops, periods, and that's done. I've scored the student. So uh, this um, rubric here calculates the total. When I put a full stop in some uh, cell, it gives me a total number on the right hand side. This is calculated and then it's um, transposed to this uh, total box here on top and this specific a rubric is out of 18. Now you have to customize this for your uh, for your own use. Um, so this is the kind of rubric that I use. Um, I just uh, have this teacher feedback box here. You can you can do it in whatever way or color you want to. So let's say I want to give some feedback. So I um, prepared a little story for the student here. Dear student, thank you for your hard work. Look at your argumentation and your grammar. Okay, because that's not uh, uh, up to standard and then keep going, try to do better on the next assignments. So here you can give more information for the student and for example, send them say, go and look at unit three again, because I see that you've missed those, um, those parts of, of the course. So, um, and remember, of course, your feedback should always look like a hamburger with a a positive statement on top and some some meat in the middle and with uh, maybe some um, corrections and then a positive statement at the end. That's always a good way to give your teacher feedback. So and uh, all this information is drawn. If you look at the bottom here from this names um, section, this is where I put all the information for the students, the student numbers and their names and the course information is over here. And what I do is um, in this specific rubric, um, I would make a sheet for each student and I will explain that uh, a little bit later on. Um, and the, the names of the students are drawn from this table here. So I only have the student number, which is um, uh, also added 
from from the sheet name it is added here into the cell and from that there's a vlookup function to give me the name of the student um, okay so that's just an overview of how i how i work with this um, i just want to change my screen okay so um if i if i share the ppt further here we go that should work um, we've looked at an overview of the rubric but um, let's have a look at how do you save then a feedback file for each student because you have to um, give each student individualized feedback in your dynamic rubric so let's say for example and this is the rubric i'm using and i'm just going to give you a short video that explains it uh, so my voice might change a bit in this video i will show you how to save each sheet as a feedback document for each student in this example i've taken one of the students numbers 2020124 here at the bottom and I've opened a sheet with that number. I've copied it from the master. And automatically, this number here is placed uh, in this uh, cell up here next to student number. And the name, Elling McNeil, is checked up from the names sheet and automatically put uh, pasted in here. So uh, this is being done by uh, through or through a VLOOKUP um, function. Okay, so uh, I've already scored this student. And now how do I save this document uh, as a feedback document for Ellie McNeil? Now, uh, the easiest a method to do this manually if you save each rubric uh, on its own and um, of course there is also a way to do this through um, the developer tab here you're making use of the developer options and uh, visual basic so but i'm not going to do that i'm just going to do it manually in the situation where it won't make use of an automatic um, small program or coding to do that for you. So the easiest way is to double click on the sheet name here at the bottom. You can uh, then press Control C, hold Control, press C, Control C, and that will copy this number because you want to save this document or this sheet um, as a PDF document under that number. Now, once you've copied that number, you can now go to File, and say save as don't you save at this point you save as and then go to now in this case the the examples are under what i call the folder presentation files so it will be any kind of place where you uh, are going to make use of it or where you will put your dynamic rubrics so here is the folder with um some other documents in there but the first one the second document here is the document that i'm using at the moment the excel spreadsheet i'm using so be careful you don't want to save this one student's document under that name so you press while this name is highlighted in blue that's how it is opened up for you this screen uh, you press Control v now pressing Control v will paste the number that you've copied on the sheet name here and then you go to the save as type down arrow if you click on this arrow you will get a pdf document option so you click on the pdf document now you've got this correct name it, you know that it's saved as a pdf document and this document will automatically be saved uh, as th that one sheet 
Um, it will only contain the sheet that you are working on. Now you can set other options as well here with tools and options. We're not going to do that. Keep it um, on the standard publishing online option and say save. Now once you've done that um, and you go to that folder, in my case, this is my presentation files folder here. When I say uh, look at the folder, I will see that document here. And I will also see a preview of that document. And um, I will see that it's all beautifully pasted in a PDF document on one page. And if you enlarge this, uh, you will also be able to see the scores and the names of the students in the preview. So that always helps me to make sure that I've got the right number here and the right student document. Okay, so the next um a step would then be if uh, if you want to change the information for each class, you'll have to obviously customize it for each class. Um, and that um, I'm just going to share with you from my rubric, uh, from my uh, file again. So here in the names folder, as I've said, you have your information for each class and your class numbers will change from time to time. It might be a midterm or a final exam. So um, uh, let's say we want to change this class number to uh, CoTESOL001 uh, zero, zero class. Uh, then uh, once I've changed it here, it will take it also to all, there it is CoTESOL01, all other sheets will have the same um, class name. So um, this is important to set up. Now, the important thing here is um, that you should set up your names sheet first with the names of your students and then secondly your rubric sheet um, in which is called your master sheet because from this master sheet we will then copy um, as individual sheets for each student and how do we do that well basically if you do it manually uh, you will go to your student number section. Now there are two ways you can double click there, copy the number or you can select it from top, say control C, copy. Um, now I don't want to use that one because I've already got that number. So let's use the next number, control C, copy. So you have to use control C and control V with this kind of function. And you uh, right click on master and say move or copy it. Go move it to the end, create a copy, just go through that process, say, okay, you've created another master sheet. Now you can double click on the name here at the bottom, control V, and you put the student number in there. That student number is automatically brought up here to the student number and the name of the student is uh, looked up from, from the name sheet. And so you can continue uh, if you do that with it with the next one, control C. So um, you have the minimum amount of copy work and, and, um, and duplication to do. So you duplicate the master sheet again, control V that gives you the new student number, new student number and new student name. So that's basically, <laughs> that's the process. You get the idea. So you can make a sheet for each student. Now, if you have classes like 11 to 20 students, I think that's still still quite viable. But uh, once you have classes like 40 or 50 students and three or four classes like that, I would advise you to look at the Visual Basic options to, um, to automate that process. There are options. And if you're really interested, you can send me an email about that. It's just not so easy. You need to know a little bit about coding and how to use, actually just how to use the Visual Basic, um, the macros and how to use um, the projects, the basic Visual Basic projects. So um, uh, the, the ideal is then to, to automatically open up sheets for every student to grade them, once you're done with that process, to automatically save all of those um, sheets as PDFs. And then you can just, uh, we are using an LMS system, so you can just take those um, sheets, go on the LMS. Uh, in my preview, I actually look at the score of the student uh, before I upload it. So I uh, just write in the score and I copy paste that document 
uh, for the student move on to the next one. So it, it really takes me minutes to, um, to, to give that, uh, firstly, to score the student. Okay, that takes some time because you have to look through all the work. But once you've done that scoring part, which is much faster because you don't need to calculate anything, you just put in your, your uh, full stops, uh, then it takes minutes just to um, save it and upload it for the student. And I think that's the, the value of, of these dynamic rubrics for me. Um, yes, well, that I think is, is about the overview of the whole story. The rest is in the, the proceedings. You can speak to David Kent or uh, Dr. Love also and ask them um, to if you don't, don't have a copy of those. Uh, well, that's from me. Any, um, any questions? Uh, we can maybe speak about that. Okay, I'm looking at, okay, in the chat box, nothing. Okay, great. Then it looks like uh, we can go on a break, <laughs> Dr. Love. <laughs> um, all right. That's, that's all from my side. Thank you very much, Dr. De Beer, for a very useful presentation. I'm sure we could use that. I, I was just curious if there might be a way to uh, link it to, this would only be important for Usung people, but if you could link it to the CAS, but other people might have a digital system. Like you could copy and paste it and put it into your your fields, but into your cells. But it, it might there might be a way to dynamically link it. There might even be a way. I I haven't done that yet because I um I would go on our LMS system and and just manually put in the scores for each student to make sure they get the right score and the right rubric. But that system then gives automatically gives me a an Excel spreadsheet with the results, so I can just copy that as a as a as a group and put it in the CAS our scoring system. So um, that hasn't been a big problem for me, but I think yeah, well I I just think when people start, I mean some of the people here probably are uh, master geeks in um uh coding and stuff like that so all these things can become automated once once we start using this <laughs>